Melkor met the onset of the Valar in the northwest of Middle-earth, and all that region was much broken. But the first victory of the hosts of the west was swift, and the servants of Melkor fled before them to Otumno. Then the Valar passed over Middle-earth, and they set guard over Quivienen. And thereafter the Quendi knew nothing of the great battle of the powers, save the earth shook and groaned beneath them, and the waters were moved. In the north there were lights as of many mighty fires. Long and grievous was the siege of Utumno, and many battles were fought before its gates, of which not but the rumor is known to the elves. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Keep on Tolkien, your favorite podcast for Tolkien-related stuff. Oh, yeah. Episode 6, The Sundering of the Elves. We're here with Joel N. and Danny J. So today, episode 6, we're glad you've come back this many times. If you just skip to this episode, we're going to pretend like we don't know that. <laughs> because I, I guess we don't. <laughs> well, we have, how we would, no way of how would we know? Uh-huh. And uh, for episode six today, we're going to touch on the sundering of the elves, which is uh, going to touch on... It's an important topic. It's an important topic. Because we, we talk a lot about the elves, and one of the things you got to know when you're reading Tolkien um, is that there are a bunch of different variety of elves. Even though they are one like singular species, the first of the children of Ilavatar, they still have many um, subdivisions. And today we're going to learn exactly how that became a thing, and what they became afterwards. So, as we said, the elves are the first children of Ilavatar. And um, so for a time, the Valar were preparing Arda for the coming of the children of Ilavatar. This is before even the first age. This is early, early stuff. Yeah, way, way back. And um, so they had no idea when they were coming or where. And um, so lo and behold, uh, one day uh, the hunter Valar, Orome, is out on one of his routine hunts in Middle Earth under the stars and he stumbles across these creatures that speak with voices and um, they call themselves the Quendi. Now, Orome found them in the far east portions of Middle Earth. Uh, they they started right around an area called Quivienen. It was a, a massive lake or inland sea, and they were on the eastern edge of it, uh, on the on the edge of some trees, and it was apparently a very lovely place to be, kind of like Garden of Eden type stuff. And uh, they were found by Orme, and originally they were afraid of him because of all of the things that had been happening to them by Melkor, who because they didn't really know who Melkor was at the, the time. Yeah, but they didn't know, but uh, he... So as we like to think that the first Valar to discover the elves was Orome. But that's definitely not the case. It was Melkor. He found them a long time ago, and um, he's already started to, to kidnap them and do God knows what to them. <laughs> yeah, um, it, the ones that stray too far away from Quivien, and it's known to the elves that there's a dark rider that takes them to who knows where. We obviously, being the audience, know that it's Melkor, and we actually touched on this in, in a previous episode, mm-hmm. one of our episodes about Sauron. Mm-hmm. This was such a big deal for Melkor at the time that he left to Tumno just to go out and solely fuck with the elves. Mm-hmm. And while he was gone, he left it up to Sauron to hold up, hold up the fort. So yeah, Melkor was the first to discover the elves at the shores of Quivienen, which is uh, an inland sea or large lake. Um, is very far in the east of Middle Earth, and uh, Valinor is in the uttermost west. So, um, and we're also gonna we're gonna post a map when this episode goes up, um, just so you have a little bit of an idea, because this is about a journey across Middle Earth. So, so yeah, Melkor finds um, the elves and he starts kidnapping them and taking them to God knows where. And um, it's known to the elves that if you stray too far away from Quivienen you will be picked up by a dark rider, and they're taking God knows where. 
So Orome finds them in this state. Initially, they're scared of him because they're not sure if he's this dark rider, but they warm up to him, and he starts to speak to them, and he wants to take them back to Valinor, where they'd be safe and happy, because at this point, that's where the Valar have been preparing for the coming of the children of Ilavatar over in Valinor. They ultimately want them there. So they try to convince him to, or May tries to convince him to come on over. Yeah, and um, well, one of the, the main things that the, the Quendi eventually tell um, Orome, too, is they tell him about this Dark Rider and that they're um, being um, you know captured and whatnot. So Orome essentially, um, you know, he's disturbed by this news. He assumes that it's Melkor, and um, he goes back to Valinor to discuss... Um, this whole thing uh, with this whole Melkor thing with the children of Ilavatar. So he basically goes back to the Valar and he says, yo, um, Melkor's fucking with the children of Ilavatar. Oh, I found him. First off, we, we found him. We got him. <laughs> and um, and he says, uh, he says, you know, we need to deal with this Melkor thing. And um, that's uh, that'll lead us back up to the excerpt we just read. So what happens is uh, the Valar go over in force and they overthrew Otumno, his um, his fortress in the north, and uh, they wrap him up in chains, and they bring him back to Valinor, and they lock his ass up for three ages. I think we talked about this. We talked about this in uh, in the Melkor episode, last episode. So you should be familiar. And so yeah, so at at this time, Orome is is uh, he tells the the elves that they should just straight up come back with him to Valinor. And they're eventually they're they're, they're kind of scared because the only thing they know of the Valar other than Orume is um, the ones that fucked up the North and made all the fires and <laughs> shook the earth. So they're kind of afraid of them, and so they're not um, they're not too keen on trusting them, I guess. So there are a lot of elves at this point at Quivien, and um, there's a total of at least 144 elves at this point, and so they're not all about to just uproot themselves and come on over to Valinor. So they come up with uh, three different lords for the three different elves, types of elves that there already are at Quibienen as sort of... Uh, they're essentially like three different families. Yeah, it's yeah. like three different Three families. different kindreds, yeah. Mm. Um, and they get a lord from each kindred to represent them to go with Orome over to see what this is all about. Mm-hmm. And those three are uh, pretty pretty important characters that you should note. Um one of which is Ingwe of the Vanyar, um, which is w- th- and this is where we get the distinction the, the first three distinct the first distinction of elves you get three different types. The leader of the Vanyar is Ingwe, the leader of the Naldor is Finwe, and the leader of the Teleri is Elwe. So these guys these three they take off, they go to Valinor. They see that it's awesome, like it's pretty. It's pretty much awesome, and um, so they come back and they convince all the elves to go on this. Uh, well, th- well, they try. They try to convince all these elves to go on the great journey, um, which is you know to the uttermost west. And this is what's known as the sundering, when they start getting separated. Yeah. So the the first sundering of the elves is um, the the group which uh, comes to be known as the Avari which are the unwilling, and um, they decide not to go on the journey. They say, we're going to stay here in Quivienen under the stars. We're not interested in light and things of this nature. Especially now that Melkor's gone. Yeah. And especially might now as well. Yeah, they might as well stay over here since Melkor's gone now. Um, yeah, so they that's the first sundering of the elves. They become the Avari. And all the elves that leave... Um, so... So, okay, here's the first umbrella term. The umbrella term is Quendi, which means all elves. It liter- it, that's just the word for elf. Right. It literally means those who speak with voices because they were the only creatures that spoke with voices. So they call themselves those who speak with voices, Quendi. And then um, underneath that, you have the Eldar, which are the ones that did decide to go on the journey. And then the Avari, who are Quendi, but are not Eldar. <laughs> So there's that distinction. So the Eldar leave. So the the way they, they basically did this journey is because Orome is busy. He's a god, obviously. <laughs> so he's got other things to do. So he's not constantly leading them. They kind of go 
Um, you know, they'll march a little bit, and then they'll, so the Orome will have to do something, so he'll go and leave, and they'll kind of set up camp there for a while, and then they'll stay, and then Orome will eventually come back, and they'll progress a little bit more. But as they progress on this journey, they start to lose different groups, and those become then different types of elves. So um, we get up to, we eventually get up to the area that we know as uh, the Greenwood, or Mirkwood. Um, later on in The Hobbit, which is uh, just east of the Misty Mountains, which the Misty Mountains are more or less the continental divide of Middle-earth. It, it splits the continent in half, essentially. So we're on the eastern side of these mountains, and um, they look, uh, <laughs> some of the Eldar, they look up at the mountains and they say, no, sir, we don't want to cross those mountains. We're done. It's the first time they've seen mountains before, right? And and they're huge, and they're they're much bigger than they are in in the um in the later like the third age where we know the Misty Mountains from, because Melkor actually made them higher and more hideous and more terrible because he wanted to hinder um Orome on his hunting trips just to be a dick because he's like I know Orome hangs out over here I'm gonna make these big fucking mountains so he can't go anywhere. So it's it's a journey, and um the elves that decide to stay in the Greenwood. Um, are they're known as uh, Nandor from then on, or um, also they they're also called Sylvan Elves, or just simply Wood Elves. So this is now the second uh, distinct group from the original group of elves that we've come across. So in the original group, just to review at uh they had three different families. They had the Vanyar, the Noldor, and the Teleri, but all of them are grouped together, and most of them have decided to go on the journey. Mm-hmm. And those that did not decide to even go at all, they were the first split-off group. They're the Avari, the Unwilling, and now we've gotten to the Nandor. The Ooh, first group yeah. that kind of split off on the way. The first of the Eldar, yeah. So the first of the Eldar that decided to go. This is the first of the Eldar to send her away. It's to send her away. And, uh, yeah, they, they stay in the, um, in the Greenwood. Later on in the, in the First Age, some of them cross the Misty Mountains, and they come into the Beleriand, and they live in Assyriand the land of seven rivers, and they're called the Green Elves, the Layla Quindi. So that's another term, the next term. That's so next term. the next term would be those that started on the journey, stopped in Mirkwood for a while, or Greenwood at the time, mm-hmm. and then later decided to come on over and see what Beleriand was all about. Right, yeah, and they live in the southeast of Beleriand, um, the land of seven rivers. It's literally... Um, a bunch of rivers flowing into it's, Syria. Yeah, it's a gorgeous part. It's just on the west side of the Blue Mountains, and it is, it's just a bunch of lovely prairies and woods and rivers. And just the green very, elves, they very love it. Full yeah. of life. Yeah. Elves love that shit. Yeah. So, and yeah, the, um, of the two, so of the Vanyar, all of the Vanyar go. They're, they're, all, they're all in. And the Noldor also are all in. But the Teleri, the bigger group, um, they're the ones that sunder. So all these sundering groups are sundering from the Teleri. The Teleri family. Yeah. So the first of the Teleri become the, the Nandor. And then, you know, the, those later on become Leila Quendi. Um, but that's not so important. What's important is the next one, is that the group that stays in Beleriand. And uh, they, like the, they like the shores and they like the sea and um, they like the rivers so they stay in Valerian. They're like, this is good. This is great for us. This is beautiful. And they become known as the Grey Elves, the Sindar. And they're the m- one of the main groups of elves that uh, you will read about throughout the Elder Days and the First Age. It's going to be mainly uh, the Noldor, which is one of the three original families, and then uh, the Sindar, mm-hmm. the, the folks from the family of Teleri that broke off at the very end of the trip, they got all the way, almost all the way, all, there. almost all the way. They made yeah. it to the sea. They got all the way to Beleriand, which is the uh, western edge of that continent, and mm-hmm. then they they set up camp there. It is a gorgeous place. Too, yeah, yeah. No, in all, in all honesty, yeah, Beleriand's awesome. But that's where we get the Sindar, and that's the last group that kind of breaks off, mm-hmm. and then the rest make it all the way, make it all the way. So uh, a chunk of the Teleri. All the Noldor and all the Vanyar finally make it to the Blessed Realm. And then you get this other distinction um, that um, it goes across all elves. And that's, um, so the, in, in Valinor at the time, this was the years of the trees. So you had the um, Yavanna's trees, which we've, we've talked about before. We've, yeah, that was one of the major things we touched on, I think, in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
In the Melkor episode. In the Melkor yeah. episode. I think we talked about it in the Sauron episode too, probably. So the trees are a major a major thing in the world, and even being in the presence of the trees and seeing the magical light of the trees is a very big deal right. for any living being. To the point where like um when the three kindreds came back from Valinor, when the, the, the leader of the three ki- the leaders of the three kindred came back from Valinor, you could see it in their face. Like there's it, a light in their eyes. There's a light in their eyes, and it radiates from them, and you, you never lose that. So, and this is the distinction that we're about to make: is the difference between elves who have seen the light of the trees, and those who have not. So the ones that do make it and have seen the light of the trees are called the Calaquendi, which means the elves of light, and um, those who do not. So including um, the groups we talked about: Sindar, um, Laelaquendi, the green elves, uh, the Nandor. And the Avari are all known as Moriquendi, which means dark elves. And I think that's the most major distinction among the elves. Right. When you know, you, you want to know if they've seen the light of the trees. The basically. ones that have seen the light of the trees and then the ones that stayed native to Middle Earth. That's, right. I think that's, that's really the biggest distinction between the elves. So, I mean, you've got the three different houses or families that we touched on in the beginning, and then you've got almost different classes of ones that broke mm-hmm. off along the way. Mm-hmm. And, but ultimately, in the end, it's really about the ones that made it to Valinor and saw the light of the trees and the versus ways of the, the Valar ones, yeah, versus didn't. the ones that stayed. Mm-hmm. And they both have very distinct characteristics due to that. Mm-hmm. So the ones that stayed in Middle-earth are obviously much more in tune with nature there. Right. They're, they're good with the, you know, the, the, the land there. The land, the animals, they're yeah, they they're they're at one with the nature of of Beleriand, especially the 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 Nandor. The Nandor are um, the naturalists of the elves. They uh, they are the ones that can you know are the best with animals and, and plants and things. Hence, why they got the name the Green Elves. Right, they're right, the right. most green of the elves. These yeah. are the ones that you'd find in the old Greenwood or Mirkwood. Mm-hmm. And um and yeah, so. The elves, the Calaquendi, are more into like magic, and um, and like the Noldor are really into smithing. And they got and taught crafting. by the by the Valar themselves. Yeah, because they literally they literally yeah studied under the Valar, like like the warriors uh, of the Valar of the the Noldor and stuff are trained by you know Tulkas and Orome. Um, they're taught to grow things by Yavanna. Like it's it's crazy. They're literally interacting every day with their gods. Which is weird. I imagine if our lives were like that, <laughs> where we could just, you know, that's how you believe in God. Like, you have to believe in God in the Tolkien world because they're real and they're over there, and you can like go talk to them. They're and actual stuff. characters. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, they're actual characters. So, like we mentioned, they uh, the of the elves that made it to Valinor, they were there for quite some time, and uh, each of the three different families or houses that were there, we're talking. The, uh, the Vanyar that made it, the Noldor that made it, and uh, most of the Teleri that made it. They they each kind of started specializing in different things. Um, and for most of the time in the future, most of the stories are going to take place specifically surrounding the the Noldor. Right, yeah, the Noldor are kind of... Because um, they're the rebellious ones. They're the ones that start the open rebellion against the, the Valar, which we talked about in the last... Uh, episode and we'll continue to talk about it in the future because it's very important in the last episode we mentioned how melkor loved the noldor due to how useful they are right and how open they were to learning because they love like anybody that'll teach them anything they're friends with immediately including uh you know melkor and sauron and you know in the people of these nature like um they're always willing to 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 listen because they their quest for knowledge, their their hunger, which is um what the their name actually means. Noldor means the deep elves, deep in knowledge and lore. They're very learned. They uh, they're also particularly good with smithing. I think they did a lot with Aule. While right, they they're were super there. super into Aule. Yeah. So they they got really good with smithing and working with uh, materials and whatnot. Yeah, and that's why the of the elves that do interact with uh, the dwarves, um. It's usually the Noldor that get along a little better with the uh, with the dwarves because they're into the similar stuff, and they also revere Aule like crazy. They both, yeah. yeah. I mean, to the dwarves, Aule is their god. Right. Yeah. And they he call created him, them. They call him Mahal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's same dude, Aule. 
So, oh yeah, that's the uh, relationships that we do see between the elves and the dwarves, which we talked about in the first episode. Right, and then we talked about the uh, <laughs> the waning of that relationship. And the that waning of the relationship happens. It's yeah, it's mainly between the Noldor and the dwarves because they they get along pretty well. Yeah, they like but, crafting. Uh, they're very. I mean, if if this shows how good they are at crafting, I mean, they specialized in this stuff. They were so good at it that uh, one of the main members of the Noldor, Feanor, who we've mentioned before, who mm-hmm. he became the greatest craftsman ever. ever. And he was the one that created the Silmarils that not even the Valar could hope to, he, to, to recreate. To recreate, yeah. The Silmarils, the gems that held the light of the trees within them. So that, if that shows how much they specialized in these in these areas... Basically, I mean, like any any object... Uh, in the Lord in the Middle Earth, that um, you don't really know how it works. It's probably because of Feanor, like <laughs> the lost seeing stones. The lost seeing stones, for instance, the the, the seven plantier. They um, were made by Feanor. Uh, Gandalf says they're at one point. He says they're probably made by Feanor. Which, if Gandalf says they're probably made by Feanor, more than likely they're made by Feanor. It's, I think it's generally accepted that they were. Yeah, Feanor. it's a generally accepted thing that they were made by Feanor, and then gifted to the Valar, gifted them to the Numenorians in the Second Age when they created their island. But at that point, um, that's mainly uh, all of the different types of elves. So just to just to review, we started at the beginning at Quivien and with all of the elves in one place, and they kind of made three different houses at that point: the the Vanyar. The Teleri and, of course, the Noldor. Of course. Uh, then Orme found them and uh, eventually started to lead them back to the Promised Land. Mm-hmm. And on the way, we had some people break off. We had the Nandor broke off over in Mirkwood. Mm-hmm. The Green Elves are the most in tune with the land. Uh, some of them eventually made it over the mountains and they became the... Cal- the the Le- Lelequendi. The yeah, Lelequendi. The, the Green Elves, yeah. Even I'm stuttering over these terms. Yeah, they, it gets... And then you've got the ones that made it all the way to the edge and then stopped right before going over to Valinor. They're the Sindar. We interact with them a lot oh, yeah. in and the like, first stage. Like we said, the like the main language. When people generally say Elvish, they're generally referring to um, to Sindar, Sindarin. Sindarin. Yeah. It was the it was the language of the land. They were probably the, one of the most prosperous. Um, yeah, they're probably the, the most elves. numerous. Uh, in all honesty, because. Other than other than the the Eldar that made it over to Valinor, right. the, of the ones in Middle Earth, they they were the they were the main players. They're they're mm-hmm. kind of all over the place, and that's why their language was the main one. Mm-hmm. And then naturally later on, we had the Noldor. They had their whole beef with with uh, the Valar, all that stuff that happened with Melkor, and eventually they came back to Middle Earth, mm-hmm. and they are the one main group of Eldar that we will that are in Middle Earth at mm-hmm. that time. So moving forward from that on, most of the stories take place between the High Elves of the Noldor and the Sindar. Yeah. Or the Calaquendi versus the Moraquendi. There's another, yeah. yeah. We so hope you're taking notes. Yeah, please take notes. Um, <laughs> I literally, uh, so... Um, There's going to be a test. <laughs> Next episode, we expect you to know <laughs> every one of these. So really, the w- what we want you to take away is the difference between the Sindar and the Noldor, basically, because that's what we're going to be talking about the most. But we want you to know why there's so many different groups of elves, and that's what we aimed at, at telling you yeah. why. The journey so behind it. Yeah. Um, it, it is a really lovely story. Yeah. It's a cool story, and yeah, and it's very important, the distinction. It may be one of the most... Uh, intimidating of the stories in the Silmarillion. Oh yeah, it's super fucked up to Just read. <laughs> because it includes so many places and names yep. and peoples and languages. Mm-hmm. That's it's probably the most intimidating. This is probably going to be one of the most dense episodes we put out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's why we're trying to keep it a shorter episode. But um it's very very dense. <laughs> and uh I, when I first read the Silmarillion um when I had to like go straight into like study mode mm-hmm. to figure this shit out. I had to. Um, I created charts and like Venn diagrams to <laughs> to illustrate the different types of elves, so I could understand the umbrella terms and the subdivisions. And you know, and, uh, maybe we'll post something like that up on. There's also something kind of similar to that in the back of the Silmarillion. I'm yeah. I'm planning on uh, posting this diagram. There's a lovely diagram in the back of the Silmarillion that kind of just outlines the different types of elves. 
and it's it makes things a little more clear. And I'm going to post that up with this episode, along with a, a map of the journey a map across. Of the great journey, right? It's 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 pretty cool. So yeah, and um, that's pretty much all we have for you, um, content wise. But um, I know everybody's been waiting for um, our new little segment that we're doing the radio dramas. The third Minnesota radio drama that we have for you. Yeah, and we got a couple um, new people um, helping us out. And uh, forgive them if their accents aren't the best, because neither one of them are from Minnesota. <laughs> so <laughs> We didn't have enough Minnesotan friends to <laughs> on this. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to hear what a Texan and an Iowigian fu- fucking sound like when they're mocking us. Well, we're going to try not to get offended. We're already mocking ourselves, yeah, we're so I don't know how offended we, yeah. we could even get. But hey, we hope you enjoy this we one. Hope, hope you enjoy. Here we go. All right, we're going to set the scene for you. This takes place on the shores of Quivienen. For it was now, in this time, that the leaders of the three kindreds of the Quendi returned from their trip to Valinor. They must now try to persuade the Quendi to follow Orome to live in bliss in the Blessed Realm. Fenway addresses the crowd. Oh, hey there, guys. We just come back from Valinor, and oh, jeez, is it ever great. Just real nice. And all the Valor, oh, jeez, they're just super. It's just so darn great. I wish you guys could have been there. Oh, it's it's a it's a tater tot and a whole different hot dish, guys. The Quendi listened in wonder as the three regaled stories of the Maiar and the mighty Valar, and above all, the splendor of the light of the trees. You could see the light of the trees on their faces as they spoke. When the stories were finished, Finway addressed the crowd once more. So what do you think there, guys? You think we should, you know, follow Orome and live among the light of the trees? For sure. Yeah. Real good. Yeah, super duper. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, sure. The crowd went silent and all turned to the dissenting voice. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Me and my buddies here ain't too keen on making this journey, you know. We kind of like it here by the lake, you know? Yeah, I think we're just going to stay. Here, maybe, you know? Hey, now, I understand you're kind of leery. We're all kind of leery. Yeah, I just don't think we're going to go with you guys. But, uh, what about the the light of the trees there? Yeah, we, we kind of like it here in the dark. But you guys have a good time. I'm, I'm sure it'll be just super. Well, all right then. I guess that's your decision, hey? Hope it all works out for you. For sure. All right. We're going to start calling you guys uh, the Avari, the Unwilling. Okie dokie. You guys have a suffer. Good day now. Oh, yeah, you too, huh? And with that, most of the Quendi departed on the Great Journey. They now called themselves the Eldar. After following Orme for many leagues, the Eldar saw before them, in the distance, the Misty Mountains. Tall and terrible, Finway again addresses the Eldar. Oh, jeez. Here looks like a real hard leg of the journey. Are you guys ready to, you know, cross over the mountains there? Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know it. Okie dokie. Sure. Let's do it, yeah. Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Them mountains look awful tall and scary, you know? I think me and my buddies are just going to stay here. We Tuliri are just kind of leery. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it's up to you, you know. I'm not here to force you. I'm just uh, trying to take you to a place that's, you know, just so super duper, you know. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. I just think that maybe we're we're just going to stay here in the Greenwood, you know. It's it's super nice here. And we like the flowing streams and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Okie dokie. You guys stay here and uh, we'll call you the Nandor from now on. Okay, then. You guys have a good journey there and have yourself a nice day, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. You too now. After long hardships, the Eldar finally crossed into Beleriand. As they stood upon the western shores, preparing to leave Beleriand for Valinor, Finway addresses the Eldar once more. Alrighty then. Here we are. You guys uh, ready to, you know, leave Beleriand? Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, no.
Me and some of the Teleri are kind of leery. We like it here in Balerion. I think we're going to, you know, stay here. <sighs> All right, you know, I'm I'm just trying to get back to Valinor because, uh, oh, geez, it's, you know, so darn great, you guys. Real good. Uh, but if you guys uh, want to stay here, it ain't any it ain't any of my business, you know. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and call you guys the Sindar, the Grey Elves. Okie dokie. Sounds good to us. Have a nice journey, eh? Oh, yeah, for sure. You guys take care now, huh? And now the Eldar had at last landed upon the shores of Amman in the Blessed Realm. They stood in wonder of the light of the trees. Oh, oh, jeez. It's just so gosh darn beautiful, you know? It's, it's like, it's like a, a tater tot in a whole different hot dish, you know? Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Real good, huh? Oh, gosh. Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Real, oh, real good. Yeah, real good. All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for bearing with us through this episode six. It's very dense, and um, you know, I'm 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 hoping now that you'll just you'll you'll know a little bit more. I'm not expecting you to become uh, become an expert. No, not at all. We just hope that uh, basically in the future, when we mention the Noldor, which we will a lot, and the Sindar, you'll basically know who we're talking. You'll about. You'll know the difference. And that's or when we talk about the Nandor, like in episode one, when we talked about Nandor mm-hmm. magic, yeah, and how that isn't really a thing. Yeah, Nandor magic's not real. That we talked about that in episode 1. Um yeah, so that's just pretty much all we got for you in the way of Sundering of the Elves. Really appreciate so, all you guys tuning in. Yeah, all the support. Um, We're liking it. We're getting some feedback now, which is cool. We actually found that we have a particularly strong following in a lovely town called Beaverton, Oregon. What up Beaverton? Beaverton, we had a total of like 6 or 7 listens there. Yeah, it's actually we Woo. The reason we find this uh, so humorous is because we're from the Twin Cities, which is two separate cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Neither one of them are where we're most popular. No. So we're nope. most popular in Beaverton. So and apparently uh, our friends don't uh, our listen friends to us aren't all that listening. much. We have more friends in Beaverton now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about moving the whole operation out to Beaverton. Yeah, and station in the air. So we thought we'd uh, come out to you guys and uh, give, a, give a little shout out. What's up, Beaverton? We appreciate it and... Uh, Everyone else that's listening, here's some fun facts yeah, about Beaverton. Some little fun Beaverton facts. Beaverton's first post office opened in 1872. Ooh. It was first incorporated officially in 1893. Nice. Um, first library was in 1925. Hell yeah. Uh, nowadays, it's got a population of about 97,000, a little over that. Ooh. The It's also the world headquarters for the Nike Corporation. Hell yeah. Mm, good job, guys. And it was... This is my favorite fact. Yeah, this one too. We found this and we were like, it oh, we're the, saying this. The first city in Oregon to have an ice rink specifically dedicated to curling. Curling. And due to that, they hosted in, in uh, 2017 the U.S. Curling Association's Senior Women's National Championship. We yeah. hope you guys were tuned in for that. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, curling is the, the goofy Olympic sport in which a giant stone is slid along the ice, and then people use brooms to, like, to like influence the, <laughs> the trajectory of the stone? I guess. I don't know. Clean it's, off the ice in front of it so it moves better? It's fascinating to watch. I don't know. I love, I love watching curling. and <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. It's a weird sport. It's kind of like shuffleboard or something like that, but on the ice. And they're so serious about it, which is why I love it. So, yeah, curling. Beaverton, thank you for bringing curling to America. Thank you specifically to Oregon. Yeah. And uh, also thanks for listening to our podcast. We hope yeah, uh, thanks for we listening. hope you guys have been enjoying this episode as much as the other ones. Yeah. And uh, and next week we're going to um we're going to sh- uh, shift things up a little bit. We're doing a a special we're bringing on a couple guests, which is exciting. Our friends from Gamer Radio, which is an amazing podcast about gaming. This is not the crossover episode no, that we had previously no. mentioned. That's going to be a, a very obvious collaboration. This is They're right. just going to be some of our, our guest friends. Yeah, and we're calling this a whiff of old Toby. Yeah, we're going to try to make case, this a lot more a lot more loose. A little loosey-goosey. A lot more loose than our previous episodes, because up until now we've just been kind of spewing information into your face. And so this one, we're, we wanted to make it a little more loose. Yeah, we want a bunch of bros. Yeah. We're talking about Tolkien. We want to just talk about Tolkien, what it means to us, and if we get feedback, we would love to get some questions in there too. Yeah, and um, yeah, old Toby will be present. Yeah. So th- yeah, 
Yeah, the whole the whole title was was your creation. We're all <laughs> gonna take a nice whiff of old Toby, a good whiff of old Toby, and we're gonna talk about Tolkien and how much we love it. Which I guess is more or less what the podcast is about. But it's gonna be a lot more casual, right? Open yeah. conversation. It's gonna be cool. You guys will enjoy it. So yeah, that's all we got for you um, today. Thanks for listening again. Tune in next week. This is uh, I'm Danny J. I'm Joel N. And yeah, keep on Tolkien. <laughs>